Welcome to One on One, the Daily Items weekly digital program featuring Susquehanna Valley newsmakers interviewed by Daily Item reporters. Today's guest is Northumberland County Area Agency on Aging Administrator Karen Leonovich, interviewed by reporter Justin Strasser. Sunbury Motors is bringing in the new year with the lofty goal. Sell 1,000 new Fords in 2019. You heard right, 1,000 new Fords. SMC knows they can achieve this lofty goal, and here's why. Sunbury Motors Ford has 2019 Ford Fiestas starting at 12820 That's a new car for under 13 grand. Browse Central Pennsylvania's largest selection of four-wheel drive vehicles. Pick from 68 Ford Escapes, and they're slashed to as low as 17820 SMC has all remaining 2018 Ford Explorers reduced by eight grand, starting at $33,985. Welcome to One on One. I'm Justin Strasser, and today our guest is Karen Leonovich. She's the administrator of the Northumberland County Area Agency on Aging. Thanks for joining us today, Karen. Thanks for having me, Justin. Now, I wanted to bring you in here uh, because we worked pretty closely last year in 2018 um, what, and what turned out to be, in my opinion, pretty good series on uh, senior issues. Yes. Um, so to bring you in here, kind of put a cap on that, kind of go over some of the stuff that we talked about sure. uh, as, as sort of a 20-minute uh, fast edition of, of what we did. Sure. Um, so this all sort of started out about a year ago. Yes. When uh, you recommended we close the uh, Northumberland County close the Treverton Senior Action Center. Yes. And then later that year... Um, you would later recommend that the Elysburg Center Senior Action Center be closed down too. Correct. Um, how did you come to making those two decisions? Um, a lot of it was based on funding and attendance. Um, we had not had an increase in attendance in funding for approximately 15 years from the Department of Aging. Um, our expenses increased, but we hadn't mm. received any additional funding. And our attendance had been slowly dropping at both centers. So we looked at funding based on need for service, and we made a decision from there to make a, a change. Okay. Now, immediately, you know, when those decisions were announced, uh, I remember the Zerby Township Board was mm -hmm. asking you guys to reconsider. Correct. There are some current and former elected officials that kind of came out and was like, you know, we need to think about this again. Correct. And I've had some interviews with some candidates who are running for, right. for election who've, who've said about, we got to come back and revisit the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think it's such a hot topic? Why do you think that kind of uh, hit, hit people's nerves? Older adults are a hot topic. Um, there's We have a lot of seniors in Northumberland County. About, 30, about 33% of the population in the county are older adults. So it affects a lot of people 60 and older within the county. Um, Nobody likes to take a service away. We like to be able to add services. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes it a hot topic for a lot of discussion, lively and not lively discussion. One of the, uh, and we'll get to some of those reasons that you know, we're going to discuss, um, but there was something about, was it the the, the Senior Action Center and, and Treverton? Mm -hmm. It was kind of broken down, is that? Yes. We... Um, it was an old building, a very old building. The landlord had attempted to do a lot of fixing and um, repairs for us, but the repairs had gotten to the point where they were very expensive for him to complete. Mm -hmm. um, we were having a lot of flooding issues. Every time we had rain or heavy snow, the water would come into the kitchen and into the area where the, the elder adults That's were attending, yeah. and it, it wasn't safe for them to be there. I think had it not been too expensive of a repair, he probably would have done it for us. But with the low attendance, it was kind of a situation where we made the decision to close at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so the seniors at both of those places were um, asked to join up with the Smoke and Coal Township Senior Action Center. Um, how have those three groups merged? Are they are they getting along? Very well. Actually, um, Treverton has moved in with the Shimokan Center. Um, attendance has increased there on a daily basis. They have a lot of fundraisers, a lot of potlucks, a lot of mm -hmm. activities. Um, that has been a very successful merge. Uh, we moved the center manager from Treverton to Shimokan Center, so she was able to bring a lot of her ideas mm -hmm. and programs. That has been a very successful merger. Um, Elysburg has managed to stay on their own. 
they have created a group called the Friendship Center. Mm -hmm. um, they're based at the same location. Um, the church has been very kind and has given them the space to use at a small donation fee. Um, they continue to meet twice a week from 1030 to 1230 for activities. Um, we stay in touch with them. They're doing very well and very happy with the situation that they have. Um, they don't have to adhere to any rules and regulations mandated by the state for running a senior center. So they're getting to do the things they like to do and without having to do all of our regulations. And to be clear, the county does not associate with the, them anymore. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. They're independent. They're independent. Mm -hmm. Have you gone to visit them or anything? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I stopped in once and our uh, director of our senior centers has stopped in. Um, and we see them in the community. I live in the same town. I live in Elysburg. So I see them in the community and they seem to be very happy. And they're doing that all on their own, self-sufficient? All on their own. Yep. Very independent. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 I'm very happy for them. Um, so the... Uh, the group that went from Shemokin, or went from Colt... Treverton. Treverton, that's the one I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the county provides services as transportation for yes. them? Yes, Rabbit Transit provides our transportation. So we Rabbit now takes the people from Treverton and we'll take, pick them up at home mm -hmm. and take them to Shemokin Center as many days as they like. And aging office pays the copay for them to go through Rabbit. Mm -hmm. And... So it's probably a pretty sad thing for them to close. Were they were were the seniors pretty understanding? Very understanding. Um, sad. They didn't mm -hmm. want to lose the center that they had attended all those years, but they understood that the building had needed some repairs and there was some safety concerns, mm -hmm. and they knew their numbers were dropping. Um, unfortunately, it's Treverton's an older town with some older people living there. People become frail, unable to attend. They pass away. Their numbers had dropped without a lot of new members coming in. Mm -hmm. So they they were very understanding. Once that initial um, he hearing about it the first time was a little rough. But within a day, I was hearing, thank you for at least considering us, and we understand that we needed to merge. One of the things that we talked about last year um, were – a lot of the older residents aren't going to the senior se yes. centers anymore. Right. Can you explain why that is? Sure. Um, we have a couple of things that happen. Um, seniors nowadays tend to work more. Mm -hmm. um, they work longer. Um, a lot of the, the older adults that we deal with, they are still involved with caring for their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So years ago, usually one of the parents, usually the mother, was able to stay home and raise the children. Now, usually both parents are working, so the grandparents are babysitting during the day and mm -hmm. taking care of the kids. So we have a lot of seniors that are unable to attend because they are staying home with their grandchildren. Um, we've done surveys about that. We've asked the community about that um, to see what we can do to try to bring more people in. And that seemed to be our number one. They were either still working or they were taking care of their grandchildren. And, and you see a lot of senior older residents, you know, they're going back to work not just out of necessity. I mean, that's probably right. a lot of it, but right. for probably they feel like they have something that yes. they still need that they don't they don't need to retire. Yes. Yeah, you know? they they want so to keep working. It's rewarding. Yes. Um, now that story ended up leading to a bigger story about grandparents taking care of their grandchildren. Right. Um, I told the story of uh, Roger and, and Teresa Hilbert. Yes. Um, and one of the kind of sad things that kind of came out of that is that. While babysitting is definitely one of the major reasons, you know, because their parents are going back to work, right. but the opioid and, yes. and addiction epidemic has kind of spawned that as well, has kind yes. of raised that. Yes. What do you see in, in, in with the, those kind of situations? We have a lot of grandparents that contact us for either care management assistance or financial assistance because they weren't expecting to raise their grandchildren and that either the son or daughter of the grandparent has become addicted, has gone to jail, has unfortunately passed away, um, unable to care for the children. So the grandparents didn't expect to raise the children and now are responsible for them, um, sometimes gaining custody, sometimes needing to provide the financial support, and they don't know what to do. Um, it has Aging in the past was not heavily involved in that area. Um, it was a younger person disease for the most part, mm -hmm. so we weren't heavily involved. 
Um, we had older adults that had issues with prescription abuse, but we hadn't dealt much with the ramification of a grandparent having to be responsible. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been a learning curve for our staff at our agency about learning what we need to do to support the grandparents through that crisis and those situations. And that, that sprung up pretty quick. Uh, I know we talked about it here and then all of a sudden we started seeing like, you know, the, the Thumb County support group yes. that you started the through the agency, mm -hmm. uh, the grandparent support group that kind of sprung up when we were talking about it. Right. And then there was a church, I think out towards Watson town area yes. that started their support group. Yes. So it, it became an issue. And then all of a sudden there's laws being introduced yes. last year and, and things like that. So it was interesting to watch it you know, we realize it started to happen and then see it right. spreading it from there. Um, but we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Karen Leonovich. Sunbury Motors is bringing in the new year with the lofty goal. Sell 1,000 new Fords in 2019. You heard right. 1,000 new Fords. SMC knows they can achieve this lofty goal, and here's why. Sunbury Motors Ford has 2019 Ford Fiestas starting at 12820 That's a new car for under 13 grand. Browse Central Pennsylvania's largest selection of four-wheel drive vehicles. Pick from 68 Ford Escapes, and they're slashed to as low as 17820 SMC has all remaining 2018 Ford Explorers reduced by eight grand, starting at $33,985. Welcome back to One on One. We're here talking with Karen Leonovich. Before we get back into it, Karen, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Um, sure. How did you come into the position and, and where, do, where do you come sure. from? Um, I actually um, did my internship with Columbia Montour Aging Office way long ago. How long? <laughs> uh, 91. <laughs> I was six years old. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> um, from there, I actually worked for Columbia Montour Aging Office for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I came down to Northumberland County back in 2012. Um, the deputy director at the time, Pat Rosini, had passed away suddenly. Mm -hmm. And um, they asked me to come down and take over that position. Um, in 2015, our administrator at the time, Pat Rumberger, retired. And I fortunately was able to take that position. Okay. Are you enjoying it now? I love it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So another story we worked on together last year was uh, some of the senior abuse numbers um, kind of were increasing. Mm -hmm. Now that includes, when you think of senior abuse, you think of, you know, the people, their caretakers maybe taking advantage of them, okay. but that's not always just that. Can you, can you explain that a little sure. bit? Sure. Um, we have uh, different types of and varieties of abuse we do look for. Um, we have a self-neglect, which is usually our biggest referral um, area where people are, older adults are living alone and either depressed and unable to get care for themselves. They have dementia and are unable to care mm -hmm. for themselves or they've just always lived that way and they don't want to make a change. Um, caregiver neglect is our next biggest. Um, we have a lot of caregivers who may be well-intentioned but not educated on what they need to do. Once they receive the education, there's no issues. Um, sometimes we just have some bad caregivers that don't do the right mm -hmm. things. Financial exploitation has been huge for us in this area. Um, financial exploitation from the families or loved ones or caregivers but we also have the scams that happen mm -hmm, through, mm -hmm. you know, you get that weird phone call from Jamaica and they want you to get some money out for them and pay them money and then they'll send you $2 million. We have a lot of financial exploitation that we investigate. We also investigate any sexual abuse or sexual exploitation of older adults, um, and it does happen in the county. You um, may not hear much about it, but it does definitely happen in our county. I was surprised to see that for when it comes to financial exploitation, exploitation mm -hmm. that there's not a lot of laws. The laws are kind of murky when it comes to, you know, yes. power of attorney and whatnot. Yes. yes. Uh, that they're legally allowed to spend this money and end up taking advantage of it. Yes. And there's, there's not a whole lot of repercussions for them. Correct. I know legislation um, has been introduced in Pennsylvania, but also across the United States, to try to firm up some of the guardianship mm -hmm. and power of attorney laws um, because... It, there's always loopholes that people go through, mm -hmm. and, and some people find those loopholes. Now, am I right in remembering that 
the numbers are up, but we're not quite sure why. That it could be that there's more seniors. It could be that mm-hmm. there's more awareness out there of what what right. abuse is. Right. We, our office does a lot of education mm-hmm. in the community to all kinds of you know service organizations, nursing homes, wherever we can introduce information. Um, there's also information on TV. There's a lot of information about the financial exploitation going on right now. Um, we also do. We have more seniors. Mm-hmm. The baby boomers hit, and mm-hmm. we are in the middle of that right now. So our numbers have increased substantially um, the number of cases that we need to investigate every year. We mentioned also that the in-home care services are increasing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, what is that situation like? There's there's a waiting list, correct? Yes. We had to implement a waiting list in September of this past year. Um, as more people are turning 60 and in need of services, our numbers of people we're serving has increased. Our caseload has about doubled uh, in about a year. We are providing home-delivered meals, personal care, and some other services. Those the number of people we're serving and the amount of units they need to receive has increased roughly around 33% for all of our services. Mm -hmm. Again, with no increase in funding from the state, that has really affected how we play with our budget and where we put our money. We have spent our budget um, in those areas of personal care and bathing, Mm -hmm. so we had to implement the waiting list in September Hopefully, we will be able to put services back in in the near future, but right now, we are on hold with implementing services for folks because we are out of money at this point. New new, new folks or new? New, okay. yeah, the okay. new. Yeah. So the ones that are being taken care of now are... They're are, okay. Okay. Yeah, they're okay. Okay, okay. Now, when I when you think of at-home meals, you mentioned that, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times I, I, you think of Meals on Wheels, which is part of, part of the program. Right. But I was surprised to learn that the Meals on Wheels is sort of going down while the cold pack meals that that was described are going up. What's the differences between those two? The Meals on Wheels are delivered once a day, Monday through Friday. They're a hot meal. Shemokin area is the only area right now that does that that our agency funds. Mm -hmm. There are other programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sunbury Hospital, Evangelical Hospital, they also do the program, um, but we do not fund them. We just fund Shemokin area Mm -hmm. right now. The cold pack meals, we have seven delivered once a week from the provider, and they're they're cold pack. They're they're a flash frozen meal that the person can heat up, very similar to a TV dinner. The microwavable. Um, they come with the full. Same with the Meals on Wheels. They come with the full mm-hmm, mm-hmm. amount of food that you would need for the day. So the last issue that we we did the uh, in, in December, uh, we talked about driving mm-hmm. for uh for older for older dri- drivers uh i definitely learned a lot about that you know yes. we learned about the mature driving seminars you know where the 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 uh, the pen dot goes around to different senior action centers Correct. and they talk to the seniors about uh you know safety and, and whatnot um i learned about the doctors they're legally obligated at any age mm-hmm. to tell pen dot this person might not be safe to drive. Right. And the other thing I was surprised to learn was, um, I think it's eight at age forty, PennDOT starts randomly uh, testing, um, sending out, making sure that you know what you're doing. Right. Um, what do you see for for older drivers um, in the, in the county? We get a lot of phone calls at the office from children saying, "I'm afraid to have mom and dad drive." Mm-hmm. Um, Mom's forgetting where to turn. Dad's forgetting how to find the neighborhood barber. Um, They are concerned about driving (coughs) and what they need to do um, to help mom and dad. So we refer them, usually back first thing, back to the attending physician uh, to have that conversation. We also encourage them to, um, if they are really concerned and there's a safety issue, to disable the car if they feel comfortable Mm -hmm. um, or take the keys. We are also willing as care management to go out and sit with the family and the older adult to have that difficult conversation. Sometimes that third party neutral is a lot easier to take. So we will go out and assist families through that process if needed. You, um, do you find a lot of resistance? What do you, what, what's the attitude of the yes. older drivers? Most of the older drivers don't want to lose their independence. So they don't want to give up their driver's license and driving. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Um, That's sometimes their last independence that they're doing. So that is a concern for them. Um, 
but again, safety becomes an issue. So we have those conversations of you don't want to hurt anybody or yourself. Mm -hmm. So we need to talk about it. Now, you mentioned independence. Um, Is that kind of the thing that you hear a lot is, you know, this is my, you know, I think one of the things that they mentioned, some of the people mentioned when I interviewed was, you know, I I can't take care of myself, you know, at home, you know, I, I live X, Y, Z, you know, right. so this is kind of the last sort of thing that uh, represents independence. Yes, is that... and they're hanging on to it. Okay. Yes. okay. Even when we offer them rabbit transit, to them, someone's still driving them. So coincidentally, uh, I think it was last week, um, I did a story on a Line Mountain high schooler mm-hmm. who's now working with Linda Schlegel-Culver yes. on some driving uh, laws. Right. And uh, that's kind of where his idea come from. He's, he comes from, he says, you know, there's a lot of drivers out there who aren't safe. And he didn't specifically target, you know, right. older older drivers, but right. you know, his idea was, you know, test them throughout the years and uh, and maybe there will be less accidents on the road or, right. or whatnot. Right. So, um, that was kind of an interesting thing that didn't spawn from it, but kind of in the line with yeah. uh, happens to ha- happen to write a story about it, but yeah. Um, what do you see then on the horizon for senior issues this year in 2019? Is there anything that is as you foresee kind of coming into the news or? Um, Health care is always a number one mm-hmm, issue, mm-hmm. always a number one issue. Um, they are most people once they hit 65 are covered by Medicare. The cost associated, however, with getting the supplemental insurances and their medications has always been and will always be an issue. They're on a fixed income. They may not have a lot of income. Trying to afford their medications and and get the health care they need is sometimes very difficult. Our office does have a program called the Apprise Program that will counsel and work with people in trying to find the appropriate Medicare supplement and the appropriate medication plans to assist with getting the infor- getting the health care that you need. But I know that's been a hot topic for years mm-hmm. within the aging population in the United States. Okay, okay. And uh, all right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, Karen, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And this has been the edition of One on One. Thanks for watching One on One. Be sure to tune in next week for another edition. Thank you.